Average 1.5. Hey guys, we're back and we've got the Tika T3X rifle, right, in 308. And this is kind of the new long range project build that we're working on. It is replacing the Hawa build that we, that we were shooting with and that you guys saw videos of. We did the Hawa, kind of like a budget long range precision project. So what I did was I sold that and we got a Tika, put it in a KRG chassis, so this is what we're working with and it's gonna be replacing that. So this is the new project we're working on. Really, really cool rifle, I'm super excited about it. So first let's get into it. Why did I replace the Howa? Uh, and why did I buy the Tika instead? So the Howa was a great rifle, right? It was, for a factory rifle, it's probably one of the, one of the better lower end, pr price wise, right? Lower end rifles that you're gonna get out of the box and it'll shoot fantastic, right? Sub them like half minute groups you'll get with a, with a Howa. Very, very great rifles. But you have more aftermarket support with the Tika. You have a little bit better accuracy with their factory barrels, even more so than the Howa. And the actions, the actions on these things are just smooth, right? Smoother than the, than the Howa, hands down. I'd say the action on a Tika has, is smoother than any factory gun, and it's smooth, smoother than a lot of custom actions. So I was over at Shields close by near me. They have everything from Ruger's to proof, complete proof research rifles, right? And I'm testing everything out and I'm comparing these, the, the Tikas to, you know, $2,000 rifles and working the actions on everything. And the Tikas were just smooth, just butter smooth. And Phil Vallejo from Modern Day Sniper, he talked a lot about, uh, he built, he did a Tika long range build, like budget build, right? And I know, I know why, because once you pick up a Tika, you work that action, you're like, damn, that's, that's nice. That's nice. So I had to get one. So I was, I was really looking for one and finally picked one up. Um, you got it used and put it together in this setup right here, which I'll go over right from the buttstock all the way to the muzzle. All right, so let's go into the details of this rifle and how I have mine set up right now. So I have it sitting in the KRG whiskey chassis, which is a folder, which I've always really wanted. I just think they look badass and it's super cool. Do you need that? Nah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I just wanted to have that feature, so I wanted the KRG whiskey. And at the time, they did not make KRG whiskeys that were inleted for the Howas. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna get a Tika. This rifle, when I bought it used, came in the, the KRG X-Ray. And I'm not a huge fan of the X-Ray. It's not bad. I just prefer the Bravo over that. So if I didn't need the folding option on this, I'd probably just stick with the KRG Bravo. It's a fantastic stock, chassis, whatever you want to call it. And I think you're not losing any features you know, between that and this setup. This just allows you to fold, which, and the folding mechanism is very solid. It's a very solid, well-built lockup system. Okay, so from there, we're, we have the chassis, the KRG Whiskey, we have the trigger here, it's a, it's a Timney two-stage trigger. It actually came with that when I bought it used, which was awesome, right? I got that used, I got a great deal. It was like 1100 bucks for the Tika with the Timney and a Area 419 break in the KRG X-Ray. So I scrapped the X-Ray, I uh, used that to help fund the, the, the whiskey here. That was a great deal. I really like the Timney two-stage, I'm a two-stage trigger guy, so when, when I saw that it came with that, I was like, fantastic, right? Awesome. And then uh, moving up from there, we have the, I kept the factory rail on here, the, the, the rail on top of the action, because the Tika rails are so, so well uh, tightened on there that sometimes it's not worth it to take it off. It's a zero MOA, so I got a 20 MOA scope mount for that, which is the F3R machining. F3R, right? F3R, yep. Yeah. I was looking at, at Different, different scope mounts. I was looking at the spurs and stuff, and um, I came down to this because it was looks really, really solid. It is really, really solid. I really like it. It was a good buy, and it would fit the 
the scope that I had, which was the Arkin EP5, right? I bought these when they were still a little bit cheaper, around 500, I think. I think the prices have gone up on all the Arkin scopes. So I'm doing a video on those because I've, I've done them all. I have all of them and uh, I bought them all when they were cheaper. I still think they are a great value, fantastic value for what you're actually getting. So, okay, from there, let's look at the barrel. This is a 20 inch factory barrel. It's like a medium contour that tapers out. It's not a, like a bull barrel or something you would see on a competition gun. I have a uh, McGowan 20, 24 inch, six Creed barrel coming in soon. So I'll be able to swap those barrels out. And that's another reason why I got the Tico is because you can get a shouldered pre-fit for those. And the tolerances are so tight, you're actually able to get shouldered pre-fit barrels for these actions. Whereas many other, like say a Howa, you have to get a, a barrel nut uh, set up for that, which is not bad. Uh, I, I would just prefer a shoulder pre-fit, right? Moving on to the muzzle brake, we've got the Area 419 Hellfire Match. So I had the Hellfire, and I, you guys, I put a video out there comparing having a Hellfire Match to not having one, and you can see the effects on felt recoil and muzzle climb, right, is pretty significant with or without the brake. So I think it's a great idea, really like that brake. And that really is the setup for this rifle. Then obviously we have the Harris Bipod. The go-to, the classic, nothing fancy, Harris Bipod. So you may be thinking, hey man, that rifle looks pretty sweet, but how's it shoot, right? So let's look at how she shoots. Let's get into accuracy, accuracy of the Tikas. Now Tikas are known to have very good out of the box accuracy. I'm talking like half minute groups straight out of the box with their factory barrels. And that was one of the reasons why I was, you know, uh, attracted to this setup. And I started shooting, I was, I was using some 175 grain match ammo and just the other day, right, we took this out and uh, first three shots, I zeroed, right, and once I was zeroed, I pulled in and got a three shot group, a uh, .36 inch group right there. All right, so we got .36 inch group, three shots, not five because, you know, ammo is expensive. So even if we calculate and say, okay, there, I think that there's, there's an equation for that to make it a five inch, to make it a five shot group. Uh, you add like, you multiply by one point something. So let's say it's, it's at a half minute group, right? That's, that's even, you know, going a little bit too far. But 0.36 inch, so you're almost at 0.3 MOA, 0.32 MOA-ish. Uh, that's pretty damn good. So you might be thinking, well, why, you know, why are people buying custom actions, custom barrels? Um, obviously, this is a more tapered barrel. It's not going to be meant for long strings of shooting. It is a little bit thicker for that kind of more of a range setting as opposed to hunting. With a factory barrel like that, shooting that accurate, you know, you're getting what you pay for. The Tikas are not super cheap. They're not like a like a like the Ruger American Predator, right? It's a, it's a different beast. One's used more for primarily hunting, which, you know. Great gun, accurate gun, but this is, you're gonna get a little bit more accuracy out of something like this. And it is more expensive, right? You're looking at, say, 500 versus 1,000 or 1,100 bucks for a brand new Tika CTR in 308, right? But accuracy wise, I mean, it's there. It's, it's, it's very good. I haven't shot any groups over an inch. On a worse day, I was shooting three quarter inch groups. And I think that was more me than anything else or the ammo, but it wasn't the gun because, you know, I started shooting through this with a different lot and just tight, tight groups. Uh, this is a group here I was shooting. You're like, wow, Greg, that's, that's not that good, man. That's not good at all. But if you consider I was shooting 12 different shots, um, this is probably about maybe a two inch group. Probably a two inch group, right? And uh, those are 12, 12 shots I was shooting from standing at 100 yards, right? Standing, then kneeling, then sit seated, then prone. Three shots in each position, because there's 12 shots, four positions. So a lot of those were standing shots, and we're still keeping it around two inches. Okay, that's pretty good. 
That's pretty good. Let's talk about some accuracy some more, right? Oh, with this big old, big old target here, we're shooting this bad boy at like 640, I think 640 yards, something like that. And um, I was getting, this is the first impact on target. And then this cluster down here, which I measured about five and a half inches, there's seven shots in there. Cool. Wind was switching around there. It's going for about, I was holding that it needed a one and a half mil to just one mil hold. So that's a uh, quite a bit big difference right there. Pretty sweet, getting impact solid at 664 out there. I'll try to get some on camera now. We have seven shots at five and a half inches, and that's at 600 and 640, 450 yards. So, so I'm my groups on that bad boy, right at distance. So, and a lot of those were on top of each other. I mean, shit. If we take a, a three inch group here, now we're looking at three inch, that's about a half minute group for three shots. There's a lot of wind going on that day and doing stuff, so. Uh, could I have gotten tighter? Yeah, maybe. And the, the the overall consensus is though, the gun can shoot, right? It's an accurate gun capable of sub half minute groups. So we talked about the rifle setup, we talked about accuracy, and let's get into the cost, right? Because people are like, well, how much that cost you? Okay, um, again, when we start using, throwing around the word budget, right? People are thinking cheap, not good. This is technically a budget rifle compared to a lot of custom rifles, right? You go to any PRS match and you're gonna see dudes with $10,000 in their setup. This is right here. I mean, the setup, the, the gun alone is, the, the, the chassis is, look, you're looking at probably 14, I think 13 to $1,400, depending on if you get the folding stock. If you buy a Tika straight up, like brand new in the stores, they're like 11, 1100 something right now, 11, about 1100 bucks. If you get used, you can probably find one. If you get, if you just get a barrel action, right, you can get a cheaper, maybe eight, maybe seven, eight hundred bucks. That might be a way to go. Um, all in all, this gun, you know, you got an eleven hundred dollar gun, fourteen hundred, fourteen hundred dollar chassis. So you're looking at twenty five hundred dollars for the gun right there. Um, is that budget? It's not compared to you know, like, like that Ruger, the Ruger American Predator. It's not budget compared to that, but is it budget compared to a lot of other stuff? Yeah, probably it is. And could you do a KRG chassis, the, the KRG Bravo instead of this? Yeah. Could, would it be just as accurate? Yeah, it would be. So if you did, if you went that route, right, say 350, you're looking at maybe 1500 bucks. You have a, you would have a tack driving setup. The scope, 500, the mount, 200, I think. So you have another 700 bucks right here in the optics alone, which is again, considered budget when most precision dudes are running anywhere from two, like realistically two to five thousand dollar and up optics so is it budget yeah it's budget but I'd say that this budget is probably the most capable you're gonna get you know at that price range there's t so many options with the Tika and I think that for what it's worth, I think it's one of the best values you're gonna get. The best bangs for your buck. Accuracy, just reliability, and, and the smoothness of that action. That smooth, it's just. Ooh, it's like butter. I love it. I love it. I think it's a great, great rifle. I'm gonna stretch it out, try to shoot a little bit further with it, and we'll see how she goes. But as of right now, super accurate. It's holding that, that accuracy out at range, out at 600, right? We haven't gotten out that far, but we're gonna try to push it, see how she goes. 
with a little 20 inch barrel should be interesting you know you get 2600 feet per second with that with that barrel right now with 175 grains and the 308 and i think it's just a great performing great performing gun